it's been like um I don't know maybe a few year gap okay. between my last book, which was about the travel paintings, and uh, the next one. Because uh, I've like before COVID, you know, I took like this amazing trip to uh, Europe, uh, my first trip to Europe actually, and I wanted to squeeze in as much as I could. So like I started in London, and then I went to Paris, Avignon, uh, Barcelona. And then on the tail end, it was uh, Lisbon, Portugal. Hmm. So I've got like all these photos I've taken and paintings that I made while I was there too. Yeah. So I want to make more paintings and just kind of compile it into a book and then like do journal entries for it too. That, yeah, that was going to be the next thing I asked is when you do these, yeah, do you add written stuff next to it? And you like, yeah. how, do you, how do you lay it out? How do you plan it? Uh, so how I plan it is it always starts with the photo reference. And then from there, I am going back to look at anything I wrote while I was there. I, I usually journal when I go to different places just to record everything. Yeah. And then the photos go along with that. I'm using the photo reference to create whatever paintings I couldn't make while I was actually over there. Because what these trips usually look like is I'm just going to a place and I'm painting something. Like maybe make like six or seven paintings in a few hours and then head back to the hotel or Airbnb, wherever we're staying, and then just do the same thing all over again the next day. Wow. And was this just a vacation or were you actually going there specifically to, to work on this book? Um, I'd say a little bit of both. <laughs> nice. Yeah. 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 I, but it wasn't like funded by the book or anything like that. Like you didn't raise the money to go to Europe to, or did you, I guess I don't know. I, again, I got very lucky with that. I had a contract uh, with this lady from Washington, D.C. She wanted to uh, do a children's book, so she hired me on as the illustrator. Nice. And the rate ended up working out to fund that entire trip. Wow. How did you find the – how did you hook up with this person doing the children's book? I'd be curious. I know a lot of people who would like to make children's books – but again, that's the whole like one is a writer, one is an illustrator. And yeah, <laughs> like, so how did you actually find this person that wanted to work on a book with you? Uh, I think the trend is like all my big freelance jobs have just come from great referrals uh, through my friends or people I've worked with in the past. Uh, this person, her name is uh, Mia Robinson, and she used to run this, um, I forget what it's called. It was like a mobile, mobile digital art conference. It was in California sometimes, sometimes it was in New York, and I would go frequently and, you know, support and contribute art. So she said she had a friend in this person from D.C., and she was like, oh, I was looking for a children's book author. I can't really do it right now because I've got family things going on. I was like, sure, I'll take it on. And uh, it ended up being really cool because it was pretty much like um, about an African-American mother and a daughter. The mother is really busy, and so the daughter has this dream about her mother, like, to reconnect with her and build a closer relationship and it's like this dream world like this dream museum and the mother is basically giving the daughter a history lesson about like the civil rights movement and the, the tech industry and all these famous people that she wants her daughter to look up to it's like you can be this person you can be uh, steve jobs you can be rosa parks and just illustrating that was so much fun like the story was so rich and just really transformed in this great project Wow. How many pages did it end up being? That seems like a novel. <laughs> I know. <laughs> We're already talking about the sequel. Um, <laughs> nice. Maybe like 24 pages, something like that. Okay. And yeah. now, now that's another thing where um, traditionally books like that would be hardcover. And it, mm -hmm. how is it? Is this a hardcover one? Is it uh, self-published? Is it like, how how is the book being put out? I'm curious how this is being sure. made. This one was also Lulu. Okay. Yeah. It is through Lulu. And a soft cover book. Okay. Yeah. And it, it's just been so long since I've used, I forgot all until you mentioned it. I forgot all about Lulu. I've, I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm familiar with just like, you know, the, the, the Kindle and Amazon self-publishing side of it and, and Lulu, mm -hmm. I forget all about that. What's it like yeah. working, working in that platform? It's good. I absolutely love it. And you know, it's nice that I have so much control over it where I can just upload everything as a PDF, just make sure the DPI is right. And I can review it uh, each and every step of the way before it's ready to go to publishing. Okay. Have you done any other children's books? Um, I did another one for the same author. Uh, it's called uh, Wow, Voices of Youth. It's about poems uh, that her students put together. And then other than that, it's just been uh, the travel books and then uh, the comic books that I was publishing through Lulu. Um, it's like... 
they were political cartoons, but like they were also aimed at kids too. Like I had two versions of it. Like one would be more for adults, one would be for like teens, one would be for oh. um, you know, younger people. I like that. So is that, that is that something what made you think of that idea? I've never really considered that, like doing ones that are more kid based politically. That's interesting. What yeah, how did you come up yeah. with that idea? Uh, I think the idea came from uh, reading Charlie Brown and, you know, being interested in the boondocks and just seeing that there are these two extremes where like the boondocks would be like more adult oriented and yeah. peanuts, like there are hidden layers, messages, but primarily, you know, you, you could watch it as a kid's show. So there's like different levels to it. So I appreciated that. So it was pretty much like I would come out with one version and then I would illustrate a few other strips for the second version. And sometimes I would take things away. Sometimes would add things, and then I'd just be like, "Okay, this is this teen version. This is an adult version." And I just put like an age rating on each one. Wow, yeah, that's really. Cool. And you're you're absolutely right about the peanuts thing. That's true. There was there was a lot of stuff that you wouldn't even get. It would be symbolic or something. Huh, mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm.